Welcome back friends. In the last video, we were building the Caesar cipher and we found that when we gave, let's say, Z as an input letter and a shift of 1, in fact, we ran into an error. Uh, so let's just recap what had happened. Basically, we had given a sequence ABC, uh, we have given a string ABC space GHI XYZ. Everything ran fine till the last letter of this, it was I was 10. Remember, index here was 25 because letters, I mean, indeed, Z is the last uh, uh, letter on the alphabet. And the new index was 26. So what happened was when we, you know, uh, did this particular operation, let us new index. In fact, we got an error that string index is out of range because really letters 26 does not exist. Now we have question is how do we fix this? In fact, the fix is very, very simple. All we need is to do, need to do is to use a model operator. However, before doing that, I'm just going to try and explain to you why that is the right fix. So uh, that's why this uh, video that we use model operator in the Caesar cipher. Recall Caesar cipher is really circular. So what that means is that if A is becoming D, for example, in a shift of three, in fact, Z is going to become C, Y is going to become B, X is going to become A and so on and so forth. Given this, in fact, though we like to, you know, write it like this, you know, in a, like a straight row, but in fact, it's better to think of this as though it's lying on a disk. So what is happening is that we have here all the letters A until Z and out uh, on the outer ring, I have written down all the indices for this, right? So basically A is 0, B is 1, uh, you know, F is 5 and so on and so forth till Z, which is 25. Now, if you think about it, and, and this is very powerful because any shift by a positive number is a movement in the clockwise direction along this circle. Let's take an example. Let's say my, uh, my input was A and I wanted to do a shift of 3. So all I have to do is to count 3 steps clockwise. So I go from 0, 1, 2, 3. Now let's say my input was Z and I wanted to shift by 2. So I'm going to count 1, 2 and I'm going to end up in a B because all I did was a clockwise movement on this, uh, you know, on this disk. But notice what happened to the index, right? So I started from 25. The moment I take one clockwise movement, in fact, I'm already at zero, two, two clockwise movements, I must end up on one. Now, if you think through this, you will realize that what's really happening is that whenever I cross this boundary, I go from 25 to zero, which means that my new index will always be given by index plus n, which is the first step, which is to take, take a clockwise shift of n steps. And then I can look at it modulo 26. And why modulo 26? Because remember, modulo gives us the remainder. Modulo tells us how much more is left once you have divided this number by 26. Why 26? Because really there are 26 uh, alphabets and index, uh, as, you, as you can see here, goes from 0 to 25. So this is the reason that index plus n modulo 26 will give you the new index. It's just another mathematical way of saying that you are moving around this disk. And in fact, uh, just to sort of, you know, uh, you know, uh, substantiate this point, you may have seen this kind of toys or this kind of, uh, you know, let's say equipment somewhere where Caesar cipher is indeed done by using two disks. One is fixed and other one is being moved. So really, you know, uh, it's it's like the same kind of concept. And like I said, the solution up there is very, very simple. All I need to do is to say index plus N percentage 26, which remember is the modulo operator. So I hope this has become somewhat clearer. Let's just see this in action now. So if I do the same string, now I'm not going to get an error because my index was 25, but new index became zero. And indeed the X N is given by, remember the last alphabet X, Y, Z has become Y, Z, A. Now we can try anything in fact. So let's say this same string, I say try of say a shift of 10. I'm never going to get an error because really I'm moving clockwise on the disk. And I'm going to give myself, a, you know, a, a modulo 26. So for example, here index is 25. In fact, I have done 25 plus 10, 35 modulo 26, which is in fact 9. And if I look at X, N, it's again, it has to be correct, right? Because really I moved along that, you know, in a, in a circular disk, right? Now, we see, and if I go back to the disk, you know, so it's a shift of 26, Shift of 25, sorry, is going to make me take an entire round. For example, A is going to reach Z. However, as I mentioned earlier, I can also think of this as a negative number. So I could go anti-clockwise and go from say 0 to 25. What will happen in our code if I, let's say, did give a negative number? In fact, the answer is this will keep working, is that 
you know, if I give a shift of minus 1 and I look at x, uh, let's say x, e and c, we notice that indeed that has happened. It was a, b, c to start with, but now it has become z, a, b. And why did that happen? Because the interesting bit here is the first index. So i was 0, i dx was, you know, 0. Now the new index without the modulo would have been minus 1. Minus 1 modulo 26 is in fact 25, hence new index becomes 25 and I'll end up at z. But there is really no motivation for us to go in that direction. And that is why I said that for our program, we are going to, you know, keep this indices, the shifts always between 1 and 25, because really they cover the entire spectrum of what we want to cover. Right. And that's the reason that we are not going to, not like it's wrong, it's not, not going to work or something like that, but we are not going to deal with indices which are negative. In fact, index of shift of say uh, 1 to 25 is in fact sufficient for us to get the entire range that we want. And I hope this clarified the, you know, the situation for you. I hope you understood why modulo is used. Uh, thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.